Got the A site now. Epiphany. Knocked out Alu. And Natsu. Still. Dangerman available. Get right. Doing his classic lurk. Coming in from behind. Very quickly, actually. Got himself into a great position. The bomb isn't even down yet. And he's gonna pick off the bomb plant. Very well done there by Get Right. Yeah, that is beautiful stuff from the man, of course. If you don't know where Net Get Right is, he's usually behind you and comes in with another huge frag there, just shutting Epiphy down. That is wonderful stuff. It looked like they were going to be able to get out onto the A site. They had control, attempt to get the bomb down, but of course they just weren't ready for the man from behind. Shut him down with ease. Yeah, Epiphany needed to be a bit quick, a bit snappier there. I mean, you've got to be always aware about Get Right Lurk. You need to be. Really at one point. Getting a bomb plant. Even if they did end up losing round, we've got to get the bomb plant at least so they can buy up early. So important, especially you know, early T half to get those bomb plants in. It really is. Now, three T's at top mid. Once again, trying to get that mid control. We do see Alu pushing up. He's got the MP7 in hand. Do you feel like he's going to go a very aggressive role here and try and spray him down, get some early game cash, or just hold back? No need. I mean, Alu's uh, already in contact now, so he's just going to. Back. He's got get right with the M4 is the uh, second line of defense. He's going to be doing a lot of damage when he's trying to push out, but it is good to have SMGs on point, taking the damage as well as dealing it, and leave the rifles getting the important fragment in. Unfortunately, Nato will fall there, picked off from Palace. Get right. So firm control of short here, helped out by Alu. Great teamwork there by Alu and get right to clear mid. Nice, safe round there from the CT. Yeah, just easy picking through him. Of course, you would expect it on the eco for them to just run away with it. Epiphy, they weren't actually able to get the bomb plant down, were they, on the first round? They came close. So, of course, still forced into another eco. Everyone going for the P250s there. Do you reckon they might for anything wild here, a sort of shock and awe play on the eco, or just...? Well, I, I, I'm not a big fan of teams just running in, dying. You know, there's no point. If, even if it is an eco, you've got to at least try and make some sort of play, make something come with it. They're going to do an interesting mid split, three underpass, two top mid. Trying to maybe do a cheeky boost here, but Harry these guys out of the set with a nade for the time being. We will go down. Get right, picks up one, Stir picks up another. Garrett's going to take Allo's position, picks up one flag, misses the player, and Short doesn't notice him. However, he's backed up and connected by Natu. And despite Alu falling very early there, they're able to. Hold the T's in mid and not to let them out. Yeah, good stuff by the guys. But now finally, into this first gun round, is this going to be the game changer for Epiphy here? It depends. It depends entirely on all battle mid. I think Alu, he's going to have this, surely. I know, actually, Jay's going to go with a quick AP, but he, he cuts into the wall there. Slows him down, he doesn't make it on time. There's a bit of a misplay there. Bumping into the wall and slowing him down. Actually missed the opportunity to tag the crossing CT, so... Maybe a bit of nerves coming in here, playing against names like, you know, Alu and Get Right. Yeah, crumble crumbling a bit there. A little bit. That's unfortunate. But they did have a very good game against Lions of Pistons, so they should be feeling pretty pumped about this. You would hope so. That nade going down there, getting an awful lot of damage over. It's fairly good. It'll help out if they do go for that later push onto the B site. Have a slow take from the T's though, not doing anything too crazy. I'm gonna have to sit back and probe out the CTs, see how they're playing. Now we will see Jay going towards mid with the orb. Oh, there's a new window anymore. Good potential. Get smoked out there as well. So now we'll move out the window. Hopefully, we could see another jewel coming in once it's smoked quickly. No, neutralized with the Molotov as well. Neutralized and Alu but very well there. Over on B though, it's all beginning to kick off now. Jay runs in with that orb and he gets shut down by Alu. This is huge. Natu chimes in as well, taking down Staggertron, and it's just all on seven. He drops like a fly, falls out of the air, get right, just swatting him down there. Wow, that was a very effective you know, hold there by uh, get right and Apps and Alu covering from Kitchen. Natu chiming in as well. Very effective. Very the T's pushed up quite a bit. The T's did well in rounds. I'm really impressed how they controlled mid there. They got the smokes down a window and connector, even a Molotov. Got control of mid. And it looked like they was going their way. They made their way up short, but as soon as they came into close contact range with Get Right up on the uh, balcony, it was just all pain from then on in. They opened up a can of whoop ass. They did. Unexpectedly. They weren't ready for it. They were unprepared. But now, over in Palace, they're all, they're all grouping up. They're getting ready. 
set piece. They're going to try and charge out and do some damage. There's a bit of confusion, but Natu is ready for it as he sprays down two juicy headshots coming out. Can he turn it into the third? He wants to go back for the face. Of course he does. And his teammates back him up. Stranded off the stragglers there, just cleaning that round with absolute ease. Yeah, I like that. I've tried that play before where you do a cheeky flash out of that. Just everyone pile on site, get the bomb down. But the problem is, that guy around, I don't know to see which player he player it was, but it would maybe more effective, you know, putting down that stairs smoke. Because it's very hard to shoot you from the uh, jungle because of the level difference. But up on stairs, you've got a great sight over into the site and it stops really the plant very effectively. And that's what happened there. Maybe a one smoke there difference. Maybe I would have got the bomb down. Mid though. Trying to get that early game mid control, but it's just huge on Mirage. And Jay is able to get a frag. That's going to help him out an awful lot. If Seven can also try and do some damage here, takes down Natu. Get right gets dropped as well. This is huge. This is really what we've wanted to see. Epiphy Bolt now chiming in with big frags all across the board. Oh, look at that. That is so unfortunate. Disturbed getting dropped as well. It's Orn Alu. He's got the AWP in hand. A one on five play. Is it possible? He's missed Red Vest. He's gone towards B. He, he thought that was a short push and pull. Maybe he's just. Actually, he's decided to save, hasn't he? He's gone over towards B, realising that they're going to go A. He's decided he's going to save from very early on the run. He gets off in a good position. Yeah, we have a look at the money here. We can't. We still can't have a look at the money. Unfortunately. But unfortunately. Or we could have could have touched on that. But still, I mean, the money on their side isn't going to be terrible at all. But it's still a smart play for him. If he feels like he can't go for this, is it an economy decision or is it just based on... He's got full Kevlar. He's got a kit. Orp and two flashbangs and a 5-7. That's a lot of money there. Mm. All on that one player. It's definitely worth saving. It's very true. Who looks away at the wrong moment. That's a lot of money gone there. Yeah. That's terrible. Bad luck there. That it just happened to be the moment he just flicks one. Because he did. There was actually a terrorist pushing up from mid as well. He heard the footsteps. Didn't know which one was going to get contact on first. And unfortunately just... 50-50 chance and it goes the wrong way. Literally just so unfortunate timing there. If he still had been watching, he would have got an exit frag himself. So it's just... It was terrible. And that triple face once again at mid, but they're going to be greeted by a duo of CTs coming out. Stern chimes in with a huge frag. That is fairly nice. And they've gained the advantage very early on. Only two Ts left. Halu is watching A-site. He's got good defense, but... Will he be ready to shut down Twister? He's on the site, lurking around behind that wall of smoke. Is Halu aware? I'm not sure whether the uh, terrorists have wised up yet. Yeah, Yunta are playing a double orb setup. They did it last round, and doing it again this round. And it's now sort of stunned and taking a more solid role in mid and allowing Allo to sort of go where he wants, where he wants his kitchen or this <laughs> CT spawn. And unfortunately, it hasn't worked out this time. He's allowed him to push up close and scoped in. He's got no chance of making a shot with Krista. I don't look at this. Both CTs, they've gone over to that A site. They believe that this is where it's going to go down. But meanwhile, we see Saw. He's running off. He's actually heading back to A now. He's opted to work back. I felt like he was going to head over to B there. He had time. Of course, they wouldn't have known both CTs have rotated, but there was a bit of noise. They had influenced that rotate. He's now heading back. He's maybe, he, was, he was expecting a mid-flank there. I mean, Gero was dead, who'd be typically the, the guy flanking, so the threat of a flank wasn't that high. I mean, Natu was unaccounted for. Could have been pushing up for mid. He seemed to be very certain he was, because he, he was waiting for a long time. Then he decided, once his teammate had died, actually to move towards A. He's kind of, so he's kind of lost track of where the CTs are. It's very fortunate they aren't on B site. They're both committed to A, expecting him there. But he doesn't know where they're going to come from. Can we come from shore? Kitchen? Apps behind him. He's got to make a decision to put himself in a really good position, where he isn't going to get flanked. Yeah, and he's the face. And close side goes for the face there. Gets the first frag, turns it into a one-on-one, -on -one, and that Molotov has done so much damage to Natu already, he's so low, he can just spray him down with complete ease. Beautiful stuff. Picks up the one versus two, and that's the second round on the board for FFE Vault. Just unreal patience in such a tight situation there. Yeah, it was a very solid play, They Kind of got a bit fortunate, the CT is committed so heavily to focusing on A site. But... Twister with that kill on Alu really opened it up and it, a three on two very difficult situation because you always got that you know one on one player on each side and one quick rotate so you, even if you do get a kill you're going to get a guy rotating on you very quickly however one on two situation I'd say favours the team a little bit more than another situation because when they've got two players you've got one on each side and then if you do get that first kill it's going to be a massive rotate time 
Yeah, you do have to have your nights on to get a sprint that far. Definitely. No cares. Yeah. Other brands of shoe <laughs> are available. <laughs> Absolutely. So again, though, the T's, they're going for that more slow morphotical play, waiting for the CTs to bring the frags to them. Get right to it. Got a Nova, and I believe he even dropped a decoy on himself. But whereas Nova is to sort of double fake, say, look, it's a decoy here, if it's a decoy here, I'm not going to be standing here. Yeah, we did see, though, Natu, he's pushed out. Oh, FFP ready for it. They come round pre-aimed on the corner. They were prepared, but unfortunately they do lose a player. They get that one-for-one one trade, but you could say this does advantage the TT, uh, the T's even. Because one, four on four, it's still a little bit easier for them. Oh yeah, there's less cover on the sides. Still going to have the advantage when they're facing. And, uh... Molotov's out here. Ooh, low health. Able to get the frag because of that Molotov forcing the CT out position. So CT's got to try and run and gun, whereas Jay is just prepared for that one himself. Right, we're playing for mid, backed up by Stone, it gets a trade. It's a one on two situation, though. Only one CT remaining. Both of the T's, they've taken a little bit of damage. Jay is very low, 9 HP on him. He's going to be limping around. It just depends if Stone can do it. Taking a few pop shots onto the site. He's got nothing really to work with apart from that Molotov. He could have tried to draw someone out of position, but unfortunately, his head's just gone rolling off. He's gone. He's disintegrated, and, uh. You know, God. Jay manages to live with a sliver of HP, but picks up three frags for that round. Great play by him there, just under pressure ramp, using the Molotovs to force CTs out of position, and then with a crisp shot to finish off the round. Very nice. Father Christmas. Very crisp. Very crisp. Pure Christmas. Oh, was that unnecessary bit of damage taken by get right there? Tried to sneak in a position on the right hand side of that window. But the team's wise to it and getting back cost him a lot. He's only got Julius though, so, you know, he's a pistol round. You can experiment a little bit more. Just try and make a play happen. I'm gonna try those more wacky straps, the shock and all style plays. Instead, they playing with the cover of Natu. They're working for each other. They could do some damage if they do actually try that connector push. Just waiting around at top mid though, still playing for the pick. Notice the CT is uh, pushed up incredibly far in Palace. He's got great information there. It's not anyone waiting palace so it's not probably going to be an A split it's going to be some mid or B play which allows him to do the snake attack you finally get that frag onto Nati though but are they aware there is another man waiting disturbed with that auto pistol in hand CZ takes off a few pop shots and he's able to get the frag onto 7 Saw so should chime in with a counter frag though spraying away takes him down Right, with the Julies in hand there, tapping away, somehow gets the headshot onto Saw. Wow. Just wow, mid-air, flicks up, headshot. That was very, uh, I don't know if it was fortunate or incredibly crisp. That was, it was definitely something, a miracle there, and Alu from behind shuts down Twist. This is just so unfortunate for Epiphy. They didn't check inside of apps there. Alu was creeping around the shadows. He's come out when the time was right. Get right, of course, crazy distraction on short. They've picked up the eco. Yeah, I mean, that's where you get when you've got two wildcast players like these, you know. Get right manages to pull something out of nothing there. He had no right getting that kill no. at all. But he did get it. And Alu as well, just in the right place, right time, right man for the job. It's the insult to injury of all, because of course he was fairly low, but it's the fact it was the duly headshot whilst he's jumped out of mid-window. Brutal. Yeah, it's just... I'd be mad. It's just completely disgusting. It's offensive stuff. Dirty even. You could say it was globally offensive. <laughs> you could say that. You could. I'm not sure I'd choose to. So I'm trying to be early. He's taking a lot of damage. It's going to be too great for him, but Matsu's going to be making up for the damage onto his teammate by just claiming two of the T's very early on. Twister gets dropped as well, and it's all on to Saw. He's at top mid. He's alone. He's by himself. Looks like a lost child in Asda, but he does shut down Natu. Can he follow it up with a second? This could be huge stuff. Fortunately not, get right, just sprays him down, slaps him out of the server. Yeah, they look very confident here, despite the rounds they lost in a row. Team Junta look to be having fun here, oh. playing very aggressively. Didn't let him have any time at all, top mid. They're all there, racing for that kill. Looks like they're having a whale of a time here, especially after that. It must be that headshot, you know, jump, dropping out. It just makes you feel so pumped, especially with all his teammates dead watching him. Yeah, you've just got to imagine the adrenaline there, landing just a wacky shot like that. It makes a lot of difference, and now uh, T is forced to do some sort of 
underpass mid split. It'll be Alu making contact first. AK spraying away. Three easy kills. Makes it four. Only three though, unfortunately. But yeah, huge stuff. Of course, it is the ego. They ran into him, lined up. He knocked him down like a bowling ball. It looked like he got the fourth there, but um, someone just stole it right yeah. at the end. I mean, Amen. I'd be having words. I mean, he that is, was all he's not be happy. I wouldn't be happy. He was in control of that situation. He just got ripped from his fingers. He deserved that fourth one. That's true. That's true. Great solo play by Alu there. Just putting a massive roadblock in the way of the epiphany rush. He's doing things up a little bit more though now. Getting a little bit more aggressive. But once again, look, we can see they're not really putting much pressure on a uh, Palace ever on the A site. Alu's got free reign to push through. Yeah, he's done a couple of rounds now. He knows. I don't think he saw the player there. He's prepared for one. Yeah, he w has seen him now. Able to nade him. And then push to get the kill on Sagaton. Sagaton's down. Hopefully that player towards A side is hinted it'll be some sort of A play. Just get right. Buy in time and be up. I'm not sure he thinks anyone's A. He's just throwing nades and whatnot because he has the time and the nades to do it. Just to delay. But now they've realised yeah, there's no one outside A. It's probably going to be either a mid or a B. Stop. We just realise there's a player in underpass now because that flash, you would have seen it fly up. Alert his teammates of this information. And Nazi was on short. If he can spot him going through connector, he might be able to get a few shots off, a tag or maybe even a frag. Yeah, he doesn't want to face two on one. Knows there's two of them there, they had a good angle on him. Keeps, yep, yeah, calls it to going through connector. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm just looking away at the wrong time there, allowing Sword to get two frags. Turn it into the triple, shuts down Disturbed. Only two CT side players left. Not to and get right, they've got to hurry, they've got to get round. He is going to be able to get that bomb down, I'd imagine. Just at the perfect timing, but his AK took slightly too long to draw. He wasn't primed and ready. And get right just picked him apart. Good work to get the uh, plant there, but lack of communication. You know, now to solve them pushing through connector. Should have told Stoner that, yeah, they're through connector, they could be in jungle, but he just wasn't aware of it. Mm. Yeah, it was really odd because they, they pushed round, they were just looking towards apps, and Stone could have shot them both down right there. But instead, he was carrying on looking mid, so yeah, a bit of missed calls. It's okay though, I mean, we've got enough depth of quality on this side to get away with it. Oh yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like, the individual skill on this team is just ridiculous. Absolutely. I mean, not to say anything, but Disturb, most Disturb and Stone are both great Finnish players, of course, previous playing with uh, Nasty and Sears team, though. And Alu, they, they're all very good players. Not to just highlight and get right in. Mm -hmm. And Alu, mm -hmm. they're all very good players on this side, and it is a, a power mix. It really is. And Jay, his head's just fallen off over at mid by a very early pick by Nati. That ball roll and shuts down seven. Saw tries to retaliate, though. He's able to get one. Can he turn it into the second? Shuts down Alu now. Three on three, but. The rifle advantage is still on that CT side, and they are going to be showing it as they strap their stuff and pick off two easy frags from Get Right there onto Sagatron and Co. Just shuts them down. Unlucky for the teaser. He's like a jaws of a bear trap closing there on mid. The short push, the connector face as well. Trap shut close, and that's it. The teaser left without a leg. Just everything at once, you know. Well, I mean, they'll be stuck there for a while until they have to gnaw their own leg off. So. Get to that stage, though, 10 yeah. 3. It's True. They're getting hungry. They will be. You know, it's dinner time. They've got nothing to eat. And they've got no stomachs now, because they're dead. <laughs> Two of them are dead, at least. Sagaton and Saw falling down very early in Apps there now. You're aware it's going to probably be a split ace. That early palace aggression really paying off. The useless flash there did absolutely nothing. Flash there doesn't even push it. Decides to push when everyone was back from uh, being blind. And uh, you'll pay the price here. There you will. The last two seats, uh, last two T's though. They're working away around top mid, just working for each other's little wolf pack here, trying to find any angles they can. There is one CT that has pushed up, and it is Nartu. Flash goes out. Is he going to go for the peak here? Both of them are incredibly blind. They're hobbling around, dazed and confused, and now they're just fragged to bits. Unfortunate for the teaser. Yeah, they seem to have lost all momentum now, Terrace. So, uh, last round here of the half. Got to try and go out strong, get around at the end. Don't want to go into the second half feeling down as they probably do right now. Yeah, you want to end on a high note, and then you've got to think of it as well logistically, really. 
if they go through on, say, a scoreline of 12-3, is it even possible for them? Very unlikely. You know, they've got, got to commit to winning the pistol against five world-class players with Glocks running at you. Uh, I'd be scared. Mm. I mean, talking about that as well, what would you say has gone wrong for Epiphy right now? I think um, what could be done is they just, just handle the trades. 100%, you know, but it's nerves at this point. You know, they're pushing their timings are off. Look, you've got one, three pushing mid, all getting pinned serve. There's no cover from apps, causing pressure on A. The ramp guy's way late to pushing up ramp with them. It's, it's just one by one pushes, no trades. Lack of communication. I think it's just generally all across the board. They've always resigned themselves to a lot before this even started, it seems like. I mean, they had a good spell where they got strong together a few rounds in the early half of the half, but... Yeah, they did. It is... It's pretty odd. I don't know how it went to them just sort of hitting this this mental wall and being stuck now, but... It all, it all kicked off about that time that Get Right got that ridiculous headshot. You've got to imagine, like, of course, people do say, uh, you know, going on tilt or, uh, you know, sort of European people say, like, breaking your mental, things like that. But mm -hmm. it, it, it does get you, these sort of things that bring your morale down. They hit you and it, you know, it does knock you into that mental state. You are, you know, you're not at your prime. Absolutely. They do feel, for at this point, that things are just going against them. Oh, and we've got a player who has a uh, VAC authentication, I believe. This does seem like it. Yeah, we've lost Alu. Oh. No, we haven't. Sorry, my mistake. It's actually stondo has gone. Have we? Oh, yes. Right. So, hopefully it shouldn't take too long to get that fixed, but these things can take time. They can take time, unfortunately. So, the team probably be a 10-minute break, it looks like. I, d I don't understand Finnish. Perhaps you guys at home could uh, translate, but I believe it's uh, saying it would take about 10 minutes to fix. A typical. It is typical for a um, back authentication error. Bug... Maybe the valve still needs to fix. It's been happening for a while. I mean, it is uh, obviously an integral part of VAC to have that authentication running constantly, but it's unfortunate in these pro events when you see something like this happen. And, you know, they had all the momentum there, Team Junta, and now it's just been lost. You've got to think, maybe, you know, this is, this is kind of like a tactical pause for Apathy Vault, if you think about it, really. It works in the same way. One player is out of the server. They've got that time. They can reset. It is working in Epiphany fa Epiphany's favour. Bit of a tongue twister there. It is working in their favour, definitely having that extra time to, um, you know, reset mentally. Talk about how they're going to play this pistol. And maybe they can, you know, they can call out a more complicated strat now. If they didn't have a strat prepared or ready for the pistol round, now is a perfect opportunity to say, like, yeah, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I think we can do. And everyone has a chance to chime in, you know, give a little piece to the pie and try and actually make something work. Yeah, but... What would you say about too many chefs can spoil the cake? Too many chefs can spoil all the cake, but you know, if you've got uh, a lot of people in a restaurant and not enough people to serve them, then obviously you're going to get stressed. And maybe that's what's happening. There you go. Yeah. Wise words of Logan. Too many chefs, not enough chefs. Too many chefs. But yeah, no, it is an interesting thing to think about. And of course, we were saying about it earlier though, the individual skill over mm. on that side is it's vast compared to Epiphy, but if Epiphy can get back into the flow that we saw in the first game, mm. of course, against Lions, the communication was on key there. I was watching whilst you and Karam were casting. Mm -hmm. They were baiting for each other. The communication was a lot better. It does seem sloppy this time around. I was very impressed with them in the first game, actually. I was very impressed with how they played against Lions. They were looking in control of the game. They looked controlled aggressive. In that way, I mean that they were aggressive and they were pushing, again, early picks and not allowing the other team to set up and do strats but at the same time it was controlled in a way that when they did push they didn't lose too many men they didn't lose control of what was going on they pushed a little bit to take control of the important parts of the map but you know when it wasn't necessary they didn't over push and they didn't lose men so I'm sad they haven't carried this on into this well it does look like we are going to be back in game though as we do begin to start getting back into things Stunt has been able to reconnect we'll see the first pistol of the second half go underway and now we put you on the spot who's going to take this round I am actually going to say Epiphany I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and say Epiphany I just think they're going to get it I've got a feeling Twister helping me out here Stonda's not helping me here X7 what are you doing 
Let's see. He's trying to get that bomb plant down. The CTs, they're all bunched up and from behind. Oh god, this could be terrible. Alu is snuck in like the sneaky little bee ears. Gets the headshot onto Sagatron. The nade does stop him right in his tracks, though. This could be so much more beneficial for the CTs, but he's still on his warpath going around. Chimes in with the last headshot of the round. Stong gets one as well. And it was looking fantastic for Epiphy there, but no one watched behind. No one was prepared for that. You wouldn't really expect it, but it all came down to Alu there. In fact, he was a little bit light as well. I mean, he got that one frag, but, but as he went to get the second, they'd already jumped out of window, mm. and Dawn, unfortunately, takes a nade to the face from his teammate. That's uh, rather unfortunate, but still... Didn't make all that much difference because they won out quite convincingly. Two players left alive. And now, placing AKs at mid with Eagles. Ooh. Yeah, that is. It's going to be an interesting one, but maybe if they can they can roll back the years, pretend they're playing CSS, they might be able to do some damage with these Eagles, but it doesn't look like it on Jay's half as he gets sprayed down by the, the P90 over on Get Right. Sagatin trying to form some sort of a defense on A, at least try and slow down the steamroller. He will fall to the AK of Alu. It's looking pretty rough, really. We've just got one CT left. Seven with the Deagle in hand. He's going to be able to connect one shot and take down Natu. Can he follow it up? He does onto Alu. Come on, make it the triple. Unfortunate for him. Stond just rips him to shreds there with that Tech 9. It's one of those things when you think about it, really. The Deagle for what it used to be. And then the Tech 9. Mm. Vastly, vastly different guns on the end of the spectrum there. Yeah, yeah, we saw how it paid off. I mean, unfortunately, Epiphany, I've now bought 5.7 Kevlar and a Scout Kevlar, and this is to stop it from going to 15 rounds. That is uh, not a position you want to find yourself in. Yeah, they're putting their all into it. They have to do something crazy here. They've got to pull it out of the bag, but it seems like they won't be able to as they are just getting completely turned into mincemeat. There's only one man left. It's Saw. He's lurking around with that 5-7. He might be able to get a frag here, though, as a few of the players are fairly low. Alu gets dropped. Tries to follow up with the double, but he'll be able to get right. Just slaying him there. Getting rid of him. Completely destroyed. Absolutely. It was, uh, Alu saying nice shot to him there. It wasn't a nice shot. Very crisp, yeah. but... And, uh, Good sportsmanship from Alu to say, nice shot there, mate. Must have been a lot coming from him. And now, once again, scouts in 5-7s. It's the name of the game. It is the name of the game, indeed. Over at mid, multiple grenades going out. Bombs going off all over the place. 7 goes for the jump face, takes down R2. Beautiful start. Got to keep it going now, haven't they? Yeah, they really do. They've got to keep that pressure on. They don't want to bleed out here. First start. Working behind. Is he going to realise that the T's have gone for that cheeky boost, though? Get right. He's got in. They found a leak. Could this be one of the things that really just rips that CT defence apart? Ooh, it depends how they play off this. So they're looking toward... Are we going to go towards a B? It's... The site was less CT's available on. But at the same point, Chris is falling back and it's going to counter the get right lurk and get right to get out of there. He's out into mid. Meanwhile... Like Seven's got another frag in house. He's locking this down, taking a lot of damage, but he's feeling it. Yeah, that jump scout there proving to be very helpful for him. Sagatron could actually be in a prime position to do some damage here, really, though. They're opting to go to that A site, and he's waiting around. If he hides in the shadows, he could go huge. Get right with a knife out. It's not like Get Right to be caught out of position, which will happen. How there's an AK all of a sudden. This is a completely different situation. Than this. Four on one. Sagaton locking down Alu, and that's a, a nice comeback from Epiphany there. Well, it's a juicy round. It's what they needed to do, of course, you were saying with the scout by. He got it so they wouldn't lose right there. It was the last ditched attempt to just try and do something, anything they could possibly fees. And it worked. Somehow picking up the round. They just have to keep it going, though. They're so far away from bringing this back if they even wanted to attempt to take it into overtime. But if they can just keep that communication going, bring themselves back to a, a better epiphy, the epiphy we saw previously, maybe there's a chance. Maybe. Maybe. It depends on time on how they can just get right threat through, uh, through the apps. He's out already. I don't think they're aware of it. It doesn't seem like it. He's lurking around behind the van. Sprays down the first. Does he realise there's a second? Spots him. Takes him down. Twister is down and out. And they take the win 16-4. Great play there. That was uh, 
a dominant performance from Junta there. Against a team such as Epiphany, Epiphany played really well last game, but we've just shown what the golfing class is between those players.